we can model, or that is to say, try to explain how ATP fuels contraction, that is the sliding of actin along the myosin thick filament, and how it then also seems to function in relaxation, namely to separate actin and myosin. In other words, we're going to try and resolve this paradox. So at the top of this picture, we imagine that there's thick filament and a single myosin head projecting upwards, and of course the actin on top. The ATP is bound to the myosin head. When the ATP is hydrolyzed, take a look at the myosin head. It's changed shape from a conformation 1 to a conformation 2. That's C1 to C2. So now one of the phosphates has come off, but there's still ADP, and it's still bound to this myosin head. I have placed a little black dot in one of the actin monomers so that we can follow any changes in the spatial relationship between that myosin head and actin. I put a little white dot directly below in the myosin. We'll look at the white dot and the black dot relative to one another to see whether things have moved or not. So we have confirmation 2 now. In that conformation, with ADP bound to the head, actin and myosin have an affinity for one another, and they bind, as shown. The next step is what's called the power stroke of contraction at the level of myosin-actin interaction. The myosin, having bound to the actin, changes shape, changes conformation, changes its angle, and pulls the F-actin, the filament actin, towards the left, and the uh, inorganic phosphate in the process comes off of the myosin head. And you see ADP bound to the myosin head, and the myosin head still bound to actin. And now if you look at the black dot and the white dot, you can see that the black dot has indeed shifted to the left relative to the white dot, indicating that, in fact, actin has slid relative to myosin. In the next step, the ADP comes off. Why does it come off? Because when the head binds to the actin in this illustration, that binding alters the conformation ever so slightly so that the ADP no longer wants to stick, and so it comes off. Now you're looking at the far left of this cycle at the equivalent of rigor. The ADP has been hydrolyzed. The ATP in a person who has passed away he eventually gets used up. And what you're left with is myosin heads bound to actin permanently. That's rigor mortis. In a living individual, in the living muscle, rigor does not persist. If there's ATP around, it can bind to the myosin head. And binding of ATP to the myosin head changes the conformation, again, just enough, so that the uh, myosin head becomes dissociated from the actin. So in a living muscle, in the relaxed state, ATP is always going to be associated with the myosin head before the next contraction. Think about that for a bit. So this is the cycle of making and breaking myosin cross bridges and explains the role of ATP in both contraction and relaxation. So the paradox is resolved.